Welcome into a playoff edition of Football Friday Night. I'm Jacob Seuss, and buckle in because this was our biggest week yet. And I'm Jonathan Acosta. This was also our coldest week yet, but we're not going to yeah, talk too as, much about that. As the that. Florida guy, you doing okay? Yeah, we, we survived. Some of our teams did not survive, but other All ones right. we'll, did we'll, survive we'll get and to then that. moved on. Spoiler alert, but yeah. so on. 14 games on our docket tonight, and we're going to start with arguably the biggest one. Yeah, one of the few games we actually had tonight where two of our local teams went head-to-head. -head. It happened at Bentonville West, where the Wolverines played host to Northside. That's right. Both teams coming in with identical 6-4 and four records. Some fireworks pre-game at Wolverine Stadium. In the Grizzlies offense, they provide the sparks on the ground. A two-headed monster at running back with Ty Massey in Sunquist Church. They ran the ball 12 times on the opening drive. And in the end, it would be Church punching it in from a yard out. Extra point, no good. So it's six to nothing, north it's side. It's not even Sunday. Yeah, no, not even Sunday. Benville West would march right back down the field. Now in the red zone, Jake Casey, the screen pass to Carson Morgan, and he's in. Wolverines respond with a touchdown of their own. But after that, it was all Grizzlies. They scored the next 41 points in this one. They win 47-21. They'll play Bryant next week. Oof, what we thought would be a close game was not so close. But now out to Elkins we go, where the Elks were hosting the Dardanelle Sand Lizards. That's a yeah, great name. Yeah, that's a great name battle in this one. Let's give some love to the kicker, shall we? No score until Noah Terry connects, make it 3 nothing. But Sand Lizards, they go for it here. But Elkins gets the stop. We were tied at three after that Blankenship tackle. The Lizards, here they come again, trying to get Deshaun Chairs, takes it 30 yards, and he's going to punch it in off the Wildcat. So you had the Elks, the Sand Lizards, and a Wildcat there. <laughs> Elkins goes up 10-3. to They go on to win this one 29-23. to They're moving on. All right, so no zoo at Ozark, but the Hillbillies, they were playing host to the Huntsville Eagles. And Early on in the first half, we'd see Eli Massengill doing it all for the Hillbillies. Here, fights off two Huntsville defenders, diving towards the goal line to put the Hillbillies up 13-6 at the end of the first quarter. The rest of the half was dominated by Ozark quarterback Landon Wright. Here, picking up huge yardage on a QB keeper right up the middle. He's out there looking like a running back, breaking one, two, three tackles, and then he even loses his helmet before even being brought down, but he wasn't going to let that stop him. Turns around, quickly walks into the end zone from five yards out. Wright kept the yards up. Ozark kept the points coming. Hillbillies move on with the 48-18 to win to advance. So now we go out to Little Rock Farmington. They were 8-2 and two on the year, but they had to start on the road. Something's not right there. And something's not right here for the Cardinals. Off the kickoff, Whitehall's Braylon Johnson. He's going to take it. And, Jonathan, when we show you a kickoff, normally... Usually doesn't mean it's not ending. Yeah, here you go. That's seven on the board for Whitehall. Braylon Johnson, he's going to run it all the way in for the touchdown. But Farmington, they got things going here. Cameron Van Zandt, what a season he had. Passes to Justin Loeb for a large gain there. Farmington, they were going to tack on a field goal here to get on the board, but it was all Whitehall tonight. Great season for the Cardinals in J.R. Eldridge's first year as head coach, but they do fall tonight 31-17. to And coming up next, we get our first look at a Boonville team coming off winning a conference title. Yeah, that and more, a lot more. A when lot Football more. Friday Night continues. And Welcome back into Football Friday Night. Last year, Shiloh took home the 4A state title, and they did it with ease. That's right. The Saints won their five playoff games by an average of 34 points. And tonight, Shiloh began its run to back-to-back -back titles. So who would be the victim? Well, Cave City, they drove all the way to Springdale. I feel bad for those cavemen. We picked this one up in the second. Already 35-0 Shiloh. Cavemen going for it on fourth down, because why not at this point? But Noah DeJarnett says, nah, -uh, you're not going anywhere. Saints take over on downs in the next play. Well, you're going to see where that ease comes from. Eli Wisdom goes for the deep ball at his man, Cooper Hutchinson. Makes a nice sideline grab. Also makes it look easy. Saints in the red zone. And the next play, Shiloh runs the screen. Wisdom to Ben Baker. Hits that little staples button. That was easy. <laughs> Nothing but room to run. 
Saints up 42 0 in the half. They win this one big. Shiloh probably should have got a bye, but you know what? They were happy to play. They were happy to get the win. 48 to 7 is your final. Shiloh looks like they're going to make another deep run this year. Back to the 7A. Rogers playing host to Little Rock Catholic. Rogers up late in the first half, and then they get fancy with it. Hand off to Kate Seldomridge. It's a halfback pass to Grayson Cash. The trickeration makes it 20 to 7. Mounties. I like that word. Yeah, <laughs> trickeration, right? Catholic was able to cut that deficit before the break, though. In the red zone, Preston Scott rolling out, hits his man Brooks Ward in the end zone. The Rockets pull to within 20 to 14. But Noah Goodshield and the Mounties offense pulled away after the break, putting up 31 points in the second half. As Rodgers, they roll on to the 51-17 win. They'll visit Conway in round two. So next, we're going to head out to Boonville. They were hosting Salem. Second quarter, Bearcats up 14 to 7 and driving. Brandon Ray, QB sneak, he's in to put the Bearcats up by two scores. That was a short touchdown. This one, well, it would be a bit longer. Ray's going to give it to his running back, Goff, and he's going to make the rest happen. Finds that hole, and look at him now. There is no one around him. Off to the races. Boonville running away with this one. It was 28 to 7. The Bearcats get a dominating performance in the first round of the playoffs. They take this one 40. To 21. Also in the 3A to a team from Boonville's conference, Paris playing host to Riverview tonight. We're going to start with Paris on offense and we're going to start with Chase Watts under center, throwing it here to Bo Bain, who here spins out of a tackle and then he eventually does get tackled out of bounds. It's 7-7 seven seven at this point. Back to Watts. Here this time, he spins out of a sack, throwing it to Duke Walker and he's tackled by Tyler Hill and he fumbles the ball and it's recovered by the Raiders. The Raiders on offense now, Israel Gamaras throwing it to Akoya Earl and look at this catch in double coverage, rises to make that catch, pushed out of bounds, but the Paris defense would hold strong though. And it's the Eagles advancing. They come away with the 17 to 14 victory. <laughs> what a there at the end. <laughs> Next we go Cabot hosting Harbor. Second quarter. Who else in this one? Well, that's a Cabot guy. Braden Jay, he's going to get the edge, and he's gone. Tough one for Harvard tonight, having to travel to a really good Cabot team. Panthers here up 33-7 after the touchdown. Harbor on the other side, they were looking to get just about anything going, but this isn't going to help. Fumble here, Panthers pounce, and Cabot with another chance to score before the half. Grant Freeman for Cabot. Look at all these Cabot highlights. I know. I mean, Cabot's a really good team. Cabot's That's a really good team. Has a lot of really yes, good Harbor had a great year. They have to travel to a really tough Cabot team, and they do fall in this one. Wildcat season comes to an end. They take this one 53 to 7. Southside traveling to Little Rock tonight to play North Little Rock. And unfortunately for Southside, it was all North Little Rock. Here, Johnny Lewis catching it on a short pass. Then he's turning this thing upfield and turning on the Jets. He runs it for a 60-yard touchdown reception, and he's even going to flash the little Tyree Kill peace Ooh. sign there at the end. So North Little Rock on top, and it wasn't just their offense, though. Southside with the ball, but this pass is going the other way. Jonathan Grayson with the interception, and he takes it back for a pick six. North Little Rock wins it 51-7. to A good game next week when they travel to Bentonville. A big step forward, though, this year for that Southside program able to make the playoffs. Especially kind of that uh, win in the last week of the season against Springville. Yes. Making that playoffs is a great next step. Will certainly help propel them to next year with a lot of, a lot of young guys on that team. Absolutely. But when we return, Poto over in Oklahoma, they began the playoffs tonight with a home game. Plus, highlights from Mina and Hackett when we return here on Football Friday Night. Welcome back into Football Friday Night. This season, the Hackett Hornets, well, they were one of the biggest surprises we had in the 3A. That's right. They were really good. And tonight, Hackett took its 8-2 record into a home playoff game against Bismarck. Yeah, because of how good they played, they did get that home playoff game. Could they knock off Bismarck? Well, Bismarck would give them a run for their money. All defense in the first half. Deep in the half, Bismarck with some life as Ian Smith finds Dalton Daniels, who hangs on through the tough contact. Next play, Smith. Finds Tony Weeks with a nice toe drag for the first score of the game with under five minutes to go in the half. Hackett, they were down 6 nothing, But here, they needed a little push. They needed to get their offense going, and they would do exactly that. Cole Kachem drops it off to Peyton Hester, who fights for the extra yards on the sideline. 
Nice hustle there. Hackett, though, faced with the fourth down. They're going to go for it from the 12-yard line. Kachem connects with a wide-open Hester. He's going to carry it in for the two-point conversion with less than three minutes remaining in the half. But that would be the only Hackett score on the night. The Lions take this one 18-8. And Hackett's season, as good as it was, comes to a close tonight. Out to Oklahoma now, where Poto was hosting Katusa. All Pirates in this one, entering the second half with a comfortable 36-7 lead. I'd call it 29-point lead, pretty comfortable. Here, one of the few bright spots for the Katusa Indians as Russell Duggar completes it to Brock Ferguson on third down for a pretty nice game. But it was all for naught as the very next play kicks Fenton, slides underneath the route, and tips the ball to himself for the interception. On the ensuing Pirates, Pirates drive, Dylan Tucker here finding a gap and he just won't go down. Finally dragged down, face mask penalty, pushes Poto just outside the end zone, and then the Pirates do find the end zone. Todd Maddox powering his way across. Poto goes up 43-7. The Pirates advance with a strong 56-14 victory over Katusa. All right, we're going to wrap things up tonight in Truman, where the Mina Bearcats, they had a good season, but they had to hit the road tonight, looking to get a tough road victory here in the playoffs. Opening drive, the screen off this one, it's going to go to Caleb Peters. He's going to fight his way for a first down. Nice run there one, by too. the Bearcat. Yeah, sweetest play, didn't end during the regular season. That might make the cut, but nonetheless. Mina goes for it on fourth down. Jamison Barnhill and Ethan Stewart lead a pack of cats for the stop. Truman takes over on downs on the ensuing drive. Eli Evitt launches it to Dawson. Sherbert makes the snag. Wildcats inside the 30. Mina, another one of our teams. Good season, but they fall tonight to Truman 27 to 14. Always tough when those teams have to go on the road. So yes. Have the home field advantage with the weather and everything. So let's, check, let's check out, though, there were some more games than the 14 we showed. Okay. What do you got there? Pecola, great season. Did come to an end tonight, though. Cedarville, big home victory for them. That was their first home playoff game since 1999. Wow, big for them. West Fork, they had a good season. Getting into the playoffs, unfortunately, playing a pretty good Harding team. Fall 56-6. to six. Vian, they, they're, they look like they're going to contend possibly for one of those state titles. We have yeah. the running back to Sean Mays be one of the five newest athletes of the week. That offense is rolling. 47 to nothing victory. The Vian Wolverines looking very, very good. Yeah, and in the top left, one of the, I think it was only three games we had tonight where two of our teams played each other, and that one clearly went down to the wire. But Lamar, they they lived to fight another day, 21 to 20 over exactly. Gentry. Sometimes those close wins can really be kind of motivational and can really push a team, propel a team to make a run in the playoffs. Yeah, but as far as first week of the playoffs went, we really didn't see too many upsets. Obviously, we saw Hackett went down. We expected them to go a, a little further in the playoffs. But besides that, everything went to script. For sure. And next week, we're going to get some really good games, especially in the 7A. Fayetteville against Cabot, Bentonville against um, mm -hmm. North Little Rock. In the 7A, man, that's going to be a great couple playoff games to follow next week. Yeah, and one big storyline is, can anyone even score points against Shiloh, or are they just going to steamroll everyone like they did last season? We might have to wait until War Memorial to find out what team's going to give them a run for the money. Yeah, but we clearly through that have a lot of teams that are state title contenders. So uh, so our playoff highlights, they're not going anywhere. It's just week one. Stick with us as uh, we go through this playoffs. That's going to do it for Football Friday Night. Have a great weekend.